Okay, so uh, it's time for me to uh, reline my forge, and it's actually long overdue, as you can tell by how well worn the inside is. I've noticed that as the lining gets worn, uh, it tends to heat unevenly inside of the firebox. So here are the materials I'm going to use. In this pile here, I've got some odd cutoff pieces from before. Some of this blanket style uh, wool refractory, which I probably won't use. And the bottom here, it's uh, those stiff but fibrous refractory boards. And here's two larger sheets of that that I probably purchased about six months ago and finally getting around to using. And this stuff is really rated for extremely high temperatures, so it's very suitable. And for the floor, I've got this hard ceramic refractory, which I like because of the grooves that it has in it. I think that'll help prevent stuff from rolling side to side. For cutting the ceramic, I've got this diamond wheel, which is a must. Just makes the job a lot easier. And for cutting the fibrous boards, any saw like this will do. So I'm removing the burner, which is very simple to do. It's just these two bolts. And I've used this forge, I've had it for about seven years, and it's an absolute workhorse. Uh, you know, I purchased a new burner thinking that this one was going to keel over, but just keeps going and going. So I guess I'll continue to use it. So here you can see the old burner, and then right next to it there, uh, that's the new burner that I bought as a backup. I bought it probably a year ago, and obviously I haven't even used it yet. It's just four small screws, and then the top comes completely off. You can see the welded on bolts right there for the burner to screw into. The original forge as purchased wasn't arranged as you see it here. I've, I've relined it a few times and I changed the configuration around a bit. The soft wool style pieces, this one here on the side, one on each side, and the one on the very top, I was just using as uh, spacers. I see this blood red color on my fingers, and I, I thought I cut myself, but that wasn't the case. It was actually, it must be some sort of oxidation. And someone in the comments asked me this twice, about having some kind of red powder come out of their forge. And I guess, like I said, just sort of some sort of oxidation, I guess. It's a good idea to use a saw blade that you don't care too much about, like the older, duller one that I'm using here, which I need to replace, because there are some hard particles contained within the fibrous refractory boards. Sawing this stuff is just much easier than trying to use a utility knife. Uh, the knife seems to just drag and pull material along rather than make a clean cut. When handling or, or especially cutting all of these materials, make sure that you wear at least a dust mask 
uh, if not a respirator. This dust is not good for you at all. I've used cheaper cutoff wheels in the past and just really frustrating. And then I cracked down and I bought this probably $30 diamond wheel and it just cuts through this material like butter. So here you can see all of the old pieces contrasted with the new pieces. I still haven't cut the hole for the burner yet. So this is a good time to inspect your burner. And this style burner here, it has a set screw there and there. And that white dot there just indicates to me, I put that there, where the opposite side of that is the orifice that shoots the gas out. So if that white is facing up, I know that that orifice is facing directly down. And so just with uh, an Allen wrench here, I can uh, undo those set screws, and then I can turn it around and give you a little look at the uh, how small the orifice is here. You know, a needle barely fits within that, as you'll see right here. And it's good to periodically clean this out a little bit, but be very careful not to enlarge that hole any, because the size is very specific. So I was thinking how to form the hole in the ceiling. I forgot how I did it last time. And then I came across this small gouge that I made in a previous video. And this worked pretty well for me to uh, slowly cut out that hole. And now I've undersized this hole. I've made it a little bit smaller diameter than what I think it needs to be. And I did that purposely because you want to take your time and get this right. Uh, the, the size of this hole will definitely affect uh, the performance of your forge. So you just want to take your time and, and get it right. So at this point, an old round file works well for me to slowly enlarge this hole. So now to put all the pieces back together. I use those soft uh, wool spacers just because I cut the floor the same as the old one, but I should have cut it a little wider and then I wouldn't need those spacers. But I'll use those on the sides and I'll use the one on the very top as well, though they're not entirely necessary. So it's all back together and ready to fire up and I anticipate that I'm going to have problems from experience I know that this refractory it needs to burn once or twice for a time in order to stabilize I couldn't exactly tell you why but I know this is going to turn black so right on cue all of the fibrous boards turn instantly black.
just by listening, I can tell that the flame is not stable and that the hole in the ceiling needs to be adjusted, just made a little bit wider. At this point, don't panic. Let it run for a bit and ever so slight changes make a huge difference in how your forge will perform. The flame is stabilizing, but I know it's not completely right. So I shut it down and let it cool. Very carefully, I expand this hole and I taper it so it's slightly wider at the bottom end. Without even looking, I can tell it's much better just by listening. good neutral flame should be almost invisible. After running for a while, the blackness almost completely disappears. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.